All right, there's a big old Fleetwood excursion. The high-end coach, they do the same thing. But you can see we got some delamination here. We also got some fleece. So we're going to have to redeck this roof. Got some little bit of water damage here. And then uh, this is problematic. This is pretty common the way they do these. They mount it right here. The railing is right there, and all that water gets trapped in there. Just makes a mess trying to get down and find its way off the roof. We're going to fix that problem too. So here's a couple more leaks right in there. The water will get in there, and you, there's no caulking in there, and there's a little fin on there, a little leg that comes off of here, a little foot maybe, if you want to call it that. There's another one that comes around this way, and the screw is right there. On this one, the screw is right there. So water will get in this way, and it'll leak down. So and you see we've got some damage here too. And like I said, this is, this is kind of typical. You would expect more, especially from a high-end coach like this, but it's all the same. This is a fleece back TPO. That's what this is called, fleece. This is called fleece. So our glue won't stick to it. it, it well, when you put the glue in, this all wad up, and then you'd see all that up underneath there. So we have to redeck this. Look at all this caulking all around here. We'll end up. I'm not sure if we're going to keep that. If we keep it, we'll just elevate it. I'll put some boots under that. Go around the other side. You can see all they used here was this drywall mesh. That's all that is. Drywall mesh on the edge there. how low that air conditioner is it, it can't drain properly by us elevating them it'll drain a lot better look at that skylight the other side of it you can see all that caulking they slobbered on there we'll clean all that up you can see more delamination right here okay. That's about all we got right here. You can just see along the edges here, just didn't look like it held well. That's where it looks like a lot of the water was coming from. So, like I said, we'll peel all this, what this loose stuff up. We'll get all this out of here, all this loose stuff. And then, like I said, we'll redeck this loose. Okay. That's what we're, we're looking at now. Then we're going to check the slide outs and see how they're doing. The owner thinks there may be a suspicion with a slide out roost not doing well. So we will check that. So that's our Fleetwood excursion. This is a lot like that Fleetwood Providence that we did. And on that one, we put a tan roof, and we're going to put a tan roof on this one with a sand collar. That's what we're going to put on there. We'll be back with more on our Fleetwood excursion. This is our Fleetwood excursion. So what we're doing now is we're redecking this roof. We don't use any fasteners. None at all. We're relaminating the whole thing right on here. So what we're doing with these cinder blocks, we're just holding it down until it cures out. Once that uh, the foam adhesive, once it gets all cured, then we can just move the box. So that's what we're doing. So we're gonna get ready to do another round. One of the reasons why we're redecking it is because all this, this is fleece. This had a fleece back TPO on it. It was a cheap one, but it still was a fleece back. So if we go along this thing with our adhesive that we roll on, that'll all mat up and wad up, and you'd see clumps up underneath this. So we're going to get ready to uh, going to get ready to lay another sheet down right here real quick. Where you end up, I gotta cut these out. Remember? So we're gonna get this all ready to cut whatever we need to. We got pipes and stuff, and then we'll uh, we're gonna glue her down. All right, so we just cut out for those pipes down there. Now we're doing foaming it. Okay. 
of these fancy dancy guns right here. Put a good old bead of talking uh, adhesive on there. I taught him how to do that. It's all synchronized. So I'm out right here, do another strike out there. There you go. That all get us. That plenty. Now when we press it down, it'll all squish. It'll be down nice and tight. Get a light up those pipes right there. We'd already cut the mark. Good. Yep. All right. Then take these blocks. That's a that's a block right there. A big one. This guy right here, he can handle 200 pounds with one arm, no problem. Oh. Thank you, sir. So now we can just take the ones that are down here, and we just got to move them all the way over here. Then we keep going all the way over there. Okay, so now we're moving all the blocks down to this one over here. That's what we're doing. And then if you notice, there's no fasteners in here. We don't put fasteners in them. We glue everything all back together the way it should be. Some other place, they just use staples. They don't want to staple it. But up underneath this, this is just eighth inch. That's all that is, eighth inch. So up underneath here is the original deck is eighth inch. I don't know what good a staple is going to do anyways. But sometimes you can tag a staple in this way or that way just to kind of hold it in place. But I like doing the blocks. It, it kind of disperses more weight on it and it keeps it more stable, I think. And now the other thing too is we don't ever have to worry about ever hitting a wire. Sometimes these wires run anywhere you just don't know since we're not because there's foam under here. So right under the original piece of eighth inch is foam. And then on the inside you have another piece of eighth inch and then the ceiling is there. And it could be a padded ceiling or whatever, but that's your ceiling. So they run wires through the foam. You know, we just want to make sure we don't ever hit one. And this is the best way to do it. You can tell how strong these roofs are. I mean, it's holding all, it'll hold all these cinder blocks. So some people wonder if they could ever walk on these. Yeah, you can easily walk on it. It'll hold it just fine. But like I said, we don't, we don't put any staples in them at all. Once this cures out, it's, it's done and we're all set with it. Then we'll go back and we'll clean all this up. And then we'll, you know, if we have to sand it down a little to get it, but it'll be nice and tight. We probably won't even need to put those protector strips there. Cause this is real smooth. On OSB, OSB is a flaky board, and sometimes it has chips in it, and I really like to put them on there just in case. Uh, it would be real hard to ever poke through it anyways, but that's just the way, you know, we roll over here. But on this here, like I said, chances are we probably will not need to put them on here. Now, we will put them on this edge right here, and we'll probably clean this up a little bit too, but uh, we'll see how when it seats down, how it looks when we put a buffer strip on there, but we'll get it seated down. Maybe a slim possibility of having to, you know, obviously put more glue in here, but then uh, possibly put a couple little small screws in there, real uh, like maybe half-inch screws that'll just kind of pull that down a little bit. So we'll be uh, looking at that. But whatever we decide to do, the whole idea is to make it look nice and fluid and even without any anything that'll stick out like a sore thumb. We want it to be, you know, nice and smooth. So that's what we decided to go do. We're going to glue it back down and we're going to get this block to hold it down there. And we, if we get this nice and tight, we won't have to even put the block in there. Uh, we won't have to put the screws in. That's right here on that edge I was just telling you about. Get out of your way. All right, this is our Fleetwood excursion. We've already got it decked. You can see we got some foam there. The other thing we're doing is just kind of beveling this down just a little bit, take some of the curse out of it. That's what we're doing right here. So we'll get all this cleaned up. We may not need to put strips on here because of the way uh, this is really tight. So, but there may be a purple or two up there. We may have to sand some of that right there where that adhesive kind of leaned it up a little bit. But we'll get it looking nice and clean. That's what we're up to right now. On our Fleetwood excursion update, we're just getting some glue down on this side. We already got that passenger side, the right side. We've got it done. 
So now we're just gluing down this side. And then we'll roll it over. You can see all the protective strips we've got on this here. So we do it. Once we get that all done, we roll it out, start cutting her out, put in all the vents and everything. We'll be Excursion back. update. Okie doke. So, got one side glued, the other side glued. It's all rolled down that big heavy roller. And now what we're doing is putting on the turn bar. Cut the roofing back. Now we're getting all the turn bar on. taped up these awnings make sure that we protected them now look at the technique right there now that's just perfect technique you gotta get this screw gun going just right I tell you look at that holy cow crikey 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 it's a wild one that's what we got so far going on so the next step is go in and cut all the holes out and then start getting the curves mounted on there. And he welcome them in. More to come. Stay tuned. RV Roof Install Studios. Working on this Fleetwood excursion. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, big old Providence excursion. So we got most of the roof all together. And uh, we had some issues with the slide out. This is our slide out. We've got a rotted roof. So we're gonna have to redeck this. But before we do all that, you gotta dry it out. It's right at the time. So yeah, it's just foam under here anyways. So this is a ply foam roof. So instead of you can see all this is all this is the rubber. This, this is the rubber roof. I went down here and it was just taped right there. That's the tape. That's how they do these things. And they expect it to last and not leak. Both but sides, the gasket failed. The gaskets have failed on there. We got some over here. You can see all that the lamination. So once we uh, get this all dried out, we're not going to go back with a membrane. If you put a membrane on here, you got a sweep gasket right here. Even though they have the awning, that's what this is the awning right here, the topper. But when you're going in and out to ex extract, you know, extending this back and forth. If you get anything stuck between this gasket, like a twig or an acorn or something, it's gonna poke a hole in that membrane. We're gonna put a metal pan on here. We're gonna make a metal roof out of it. That'll be done. We don't have to worry about it again. And we got it in a nice brown. We got the metal in a nice brown color, so it'll look great once we put it on. That other one's on the opposite side. It's the same way. So, but we have to let this all dry out before we can do anything. It's, it's a lot easier to work with it when it's dry than when it's all rotted and soppy wet and everything so but uh well we'll let you know how we come along with this it'll be a bit more to dry out you can see how much we got pulled up here yeah. right, there's what we get on our this is our uh excursion uh, a big old fleetwood here all the way through so we'd like to find out where these leaks are coming from and i think this is one of our culprits right here it looks like it's real close to coming through the roof some of them are deeper than the others this one's all the way through you can see them all that one especially right there that looks pretty high sun. up those are for the cabinet there's a cabinet underneath here and that's what they did is they screwed it up through the cabinet so that probably encouraged this thing to leak pretty good so we're going to end up replacing this whole thing they did the same on the opposite side so we're going to fix all this mess and get it done right and then put the, uh, the roof back together. But that looks like where it was coming from. See this gap right here? No. So that's what we're working on. So this is the old roofing right here. So there's a, that's the decking there and then it was sitting on that ply foam right this foam. That's how they laminate it all together. So. But anyhow, we'll, we'll get it all back together. It's got a sheet metal on there, but we're not going to put uh, a regular rubber or a membrane. We're going to make a, a whole sheet metal roof for it. That's what we're trying to work at so we get our measurements right. We'll make it all in one piece. It'll be nice uh, cocoa brown, real close to this color on the side. It'll look good. We'll be back. All right, we're inside the excursion. So those big screws are right here. These are the ones that hold down this frame assembly right here on the inside. This is the inside fascia. 
these are the screws that they mounted the cabinet to and these are the ones that are poking up through the roofing because they're too tall those are them right there you can see how many there are and some of them are a little different sizes than others that's what we noticed they are are not all the same size so and some of them really got buried up in there pretty good see and I know that there's another piece of trim that goes on here but that's what prompted all this whole thing to leak typically you'll get you'll get these leaks if you have a tear in them on the slide outs or if you had like maybe an acorn or maybe a twig or something on the roof as you're opening or even closing it we'll say when you're trying to close it back in as you're trying to leave and it didn't have an awning topper or something got blown in there and it got trapped between that sweep gasket there's a sweep gasket on there if it did it could have poked a hole that's kind of common but having screws come up through there that's a that's a manufacturer's defect we have the same problem over here which I'm sure this is the driver's side one I'm sure we got the same problem over here and we're gonna investigate that but these screws would be way in here so we're gonna see what caused this one this may be a different a different uh, type of leak when we notice this one we'll let you know but we didn't we're not gonna take all this down but we do have some screws that run up through the top up inside here right here's one and we're gonna check it when we get on that other side we'll keep you updated if we see something over there that's what we're working on right now. Okay, back at our excursion. All right, what we did, get all that, this is the foam that was in there. We put some new sheets down. But this is the, this is the old, uh, the slide out. So what we did is we, we put this piece in here. It's a piece of composite to hold the cabinet up because there was no strength on that and the screws were coming up pretty high. So now what we're doing is just reskinning it with another piece of uh, Luon on there. So we can put the pan and then we're going to make that metal pan up in a little bit but we've got all this down here we're going to glue it all in here in just a second we're just cutting it to size right now that's where we're at so far and uh once we get that down like you said we'll fabricate up the pan pan will go in and then you don't have to worry about it again there's there's no issue with it you wouldn't have to worry about that rubber getting compromised or any membrane even though now on here on the main roof this here is a tpo but again these slide outs they come in and out I just don't want anything to get stuck in between a sweep gasket and pinch the roofing. And it could do it on that too, depending on how sharp that little branch is. And you could have a little leak. By putting a metal pan on there, you eliminate all that. You eliminate everything. You're not going to have anything pinched through the uh, heavy gauge that we're going to be using on here. It'll be a 24 gauge, or excuse me, a 26 gauge Galvalum. And it's going to be brown like that. So it'll look nice. It'll look like it was supposed to be there. So that's what we're working on. This is our excursion slide out. So we made our roof pan up nice brown and all we're doing now is just drive fitting it once we make sure that fits in nice and snug this will tuck down see it'll push down in there and that's it we'll glue it in place i don't even have, ever have to worry about a roof again all we're doing is making sure it fits really good so we'll pop it out then we'll glue it in place and it's done but it matches that coach yeah, there's obviously a shade difference, but I mean it comes in along with all the other colors. See, I think it looks pretty well. We try to make these coaches look as good as they can. There's no reason we got to put one on there. We might as well get something that looks well. People are proud of their coaches. So that's what we're up to now. Like I said, just drive fitting her in. That's it. Then we got to put that top trim back on and assemble everything, but, but she's on her way. We got the other one to do on the opposite side. This is the side. opposite side of our Fleetwood here, this big old excursion. We're doing the uh, driver's side slide out now. We pulled this up. We had some dampness under there, so we pulled the foam up. Now we got a fan sitting on here trying to dry it out. Once that's dry, we'll get new foam in there, and then we'll uh, get it laminated back, put a new deck on it, and then we'll get the pan made like we did on the opposite side. And these are Fleetwood that we're fixing the slide outs on. So that's a new piece of insulation that we're just starting to set in there we have a fan on it and what we're doing now is just getting some fresh insulation in there we're going to glue that back in and then we put another piece of sheathing down and we'll put the new roof pan on there as soon as we fabricate that up as well and there's our fleetwood excursion she's done here's our logo right there rvroofinstall.com this roof was installed october 2018 so we've got a whole roof it's all done we put in the slide out uh, roofs on there as well we showed you that the slide outs are in it's gonna be real hard to show you 
the, the finish on because there are awnings on top of them so you're not going to be able to see anything except for the color of that metal which is all it was is brown but uh, we've got these boots in here that we put for the ladder and these will always stay like that always stay flexible those are really prone to leaking so we put them in there we load them with a, what's called a portable sealer this is all commercial everything here is a commercial application it's the same roof you're going to find on a hotel on an office building a library a restaurant We've got two strikes of caulking that go all the way down this turn bar. We've got two strikes of caulking that go all over here. So we do the first strike, and then we wait for it to cure. We do a second strike. If you've ever run a caulking gun, you'll hear it pop and crackle because sometimes there's air bubbles in the actual tube. Well, you just buried an air bubble. So what we want to make sure is that that air bubble going down the road won't surface. So the best way to get around that is to put another strike of caulking on there. Uh, we've got our curbs right here for our this vent. We've got them for... The skylight over there for the air conditioner. These are all heat welded in. You're not going to have all that caulking slobbered all over this roof. This is a three inch weld right here that goes all around this curb. The curb out there. So this is your flashing detail. And then also you have a counter flashing which is right here that we designed. So now you get in a heavy storm and that rain is just blowing and pushing across here. It's going to probably get pushed up on this but it's going to hit this counter flash and it's going to roll out this way or the opposite side but it won't be able to get up inside so it keeps it all down away from the components we've got this right here done as well the uh, curves you can see we got counter flashing on that and uh, we also have the plumbing over there and we got bell caps on those as well and those have the same sealer in them as those ladders right there that's the same type of sealer right there you got some stands all that does is just give the air conditioning some balance that's all it does Again, everything's all heat welded. We got a counter flash up underneath there. Now, the purpose of this counter flash is when the rain comes down on top of the air conditioner, it's going to want to roll and trickle around. Well, there's a foam gasket under there. I don't want it to even come around there. Now, the front, as you can see, is real close to the front of that curb. Well, that's why we put that flashing there. So it'll hit that roll out, get up underneath the other counter flash, and it'll roll out that way. You can see the sides, they have a lot of room, and even the back, you can see how much. But the front, they always sit real close like that. That's just the way they're designed. So that's why we put that piece on there. This one has one as well. You can see everything is all sealed and tight. You may be able to see some of these lines going through there, and what those are are buffer strips or protective strips where the uh, sheathing comes together to make sure that we don't compromise the main roofing at all we've got our satellite dish up here we've got a uh, we've got a uh, antenna over there so we again we've got a boot under there for the wiring and all that goes back in there so the uh, now on this here let's see if I get this back blurring out on me all right so here's our awning the problem with this awning that she had on there is they just take that rail and they put it right down to the roof and they seal it and it becomes a dam so what we did is we made up all these composite buffer pieces little spacers so the water can drain out properly and not get trapped that's a really big awning so she was having some concerns with that Let's see if I can show you a little better on the other side maybe so what we try to do here we want to solve the problems we don't want them to rear their ugly heads up again. We want to solve them. So again, we got the two layers on here. And then these are the slide outs we were working on right here. But like I said, with all the awning and everything, you can't see anything. But now the water can actually get down inside here. Let's see if we can see it from underneath here. But there's a nice space there for water to drain into the gutter and uh, then it'll drain properly instead of getting all bulked up and sitting here it'll be able to like I said to drain out properly and there's the other side you can see same thing all that's heat welded heat welded got our stands in there and uh, just doing another prudent measure there's the last strike going on here and we'll be good to go we've got our little base here for this little uh, boomerang antenna that's what I call them and uh, that's about it so this is a TPO roof it's a commercial grade and there's uh, plenty of videos on our YouTube channel it's youtube.com forward slash RV roof install you can see a whole bunch of videos on there I uh, go to our website itself RV roof install.com there's a lot of information on there we post these videos we want folks to do their homework you do not want to do a roof like this twice it's not necessary 
That's why we go through the lens to make sure we do it right the first time and then you don't have any issues. Use the right products, take the time to, to uh, address all the little issues that cause the leaks and do it properly. Again, they're too expensive to do twice. So we we'll appreciate you watching and subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's plenty of reviews on our Facebook as well. So take a look at that. And if you have any questions, give us a call here at 423-475-ROOF. 423-475-7663. Thanks for watching.